welcome back to another Heather Mac Reacts. Today is Friday, so we're getting some revenge, and this week, it's nuclear. If you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe because I post five times a week, every single week. And if you're ready, I'm ready. Let's get into this first nuclear revenge story. This says, fire me for speaking up. Enjoy going out of business. <laughs> and then it's labeled, sorry, not sorry. So I'm super ready. Let's get right into the story. This is a long one. Skip to the bottom for the TLDR if you must. If it's long, it better be worth it. Don't waste my time with insignificant details. Let's hope for the best. <laughs> Many years ago, I worked at an automotive repair shop that was owned by a very nasty person. This person actually had two shops that he ran and the best way I can describe him was as a tyrant. Always fun to work for those sorts. <laughs> Both shops had cameras and he would watch us work from the comfort of his home. If he saw something he didn't like, such as us taking a five minute smoke break or not sweeping for half a minute during downtime, or if he just wanted to bust balls, he would call the shop and harass us or, ready, or better yet at times show up and harass us in person. In addition, he would regularly berate us for no reason, threaten to not pay us because the shops weren't busy and would have an absolute meltdown if you dared question his authority. It was spectacular in the worst of ways. You're not gonna pay me because you can't bring business into your shop? I think not, Buster. After working for him for a few months and dealing with his shenanigans and getting sick of pointless arguments with him, I started reconsidering my employment there. Around the same time, the owner decided to move me from, from one shop to the other, really for no reason other than likely to try to push me out as that was what he did with the few people that I'd already worked with. Odd coincidence being that I had not discussed my thoughts of leaving with anyone, but I digress. I genuinely disliked the idea of working at this other shop. It was older and a bit run down. Plus it was in a pretty terrible area with high crime, but I wanted to line something up elsewhere before I jumped ship. So I made the move. This is where the beginning of the end started for old Mr. Owner. <laughs> Once I got settled into the new shop, I got to talking with my fellow technicians. As it turned out, the owner was unsurprisingly a racist scumbag, and every single one of his employees at this location, aside from me, was African American. Oh, so put all the black folks in the high crime area in the busted, old, worn down shop? Nice of you. I'll spare you the details, but let's just say it's a miracle that the owner came into the shop, said what he said, and walked out breathing. In addition, he would regularly send people home with no pay for the day just to be an ass. I would really like to see you try it. <laughs> this went on for a few weeks, him coming by, being nasty to all of us, and I was over it and was just about to leave as I had lined up other employment. The other techs were also over it. I went to give the owner my two weeks notice via phone discreetly, which I should have known wasn't a great idea. And instead of discussing it like a human, he decided to come down and talk face to face. Well, our friend was so incensed that I put my notice in and he forced me to clock out and go home and also forced two other techs who decided to stand up for me to do the same. I decided that I had enough of this guy's shit and that not only did he deserve to have some kind of rep reciprocation against him, but the other techs deserved better than to continually being watched walked on. So I filed a complaint with the Department of Labor and outlined everything. Within a few days, they had launched an investigation. And of course, the owner found out who filed the complaint and called the shop and gave me hell about it stupidly because the phones he had were on recorded lines. Guess who I had request to listen to that conversation? I mean, really, y'all should have been complaining to some kind of labor board or commission a long freaking time ago. In the end, I was terminated by him prior to my two weeks being up, as were the two techs who stood behind me. I filed for unemployment, which he fought me on by filing appeals with a judge, then not showing up three times in a row. This prompted the judge to bar him from requesting appeals against me and granting me full unemployment pay. Months later, I got a written letter from him extending an apology and offer to work for him again. Not likely, bud. <laughs> Two months later, I got a letter from the DOL, Department of Labor, saying that the investigation was closed and that he had been found guilty of multiple charges and was barred from operating a shop or any other business in the state for several years. Well, ain't that just called... Karma. 
<laughs> is this the karma day? You got what you deserved, sir. I just don't understand. Like, listen, I've never owned a business before, but I've been a manager before. And more importantly, my husband has been a manager in some capacity for the past 10 plus years. Um, and he's been a general manager for two or three years. And let me tell you something, your employees will work harder for the nice boss who isn't just a pushover. My husband's not a pushover. He gets his work done. He makes everyone else get their work done. But you know what? When you're working beside someone who is decent, who is nice, who likes to have a good time when the time calls for it, um, someone who takes your request days off into consideration and um, approves them and works around them as often as possible. Someone who will literally be kneeling on the floor next to you scrubbing floors if that's what it takes. It makes you want to work harder for them. It makes you want to earn their respect because you know you have their respect because you know you respect them. So yeah, you don't have to be a dick to be a good manager. My husband's not a dick and he's the best manager most of those people have ever worked with or for. And when he's not in the building, everyone's like, oh. And it's funny because usually like, like the GM's not in and they're like, oh cool, like GM's not here. No, uh, most of the employees are disappointed when he's not in the building because he's that great of a manager. So just goes to show you, you don't need to be a dick to get the results that you want. And in fact, when you're an asshole, you usually get worse results. So take that, put it in your pocket, save it for later. Let's get on to the next story. This says revenge is a dish best served cold. Mine has been cooling for 10 years and counting. I'm feeling a little whiff of petty here and I'm here for it. I, female 40, have been married to my husband, 44 male, for 20 years now. We have two kids, 16 female and 13 male. My husband is what I would consider a high earner by middle-class standards. Also, strap in folks, this is going to be long. I've never told anyone else, so <sighs> we're not gonna read the TLDR. We're not gonna give it away. The last one was long, but worth it. All the details were pertinent. Let's hope we can keep that streak going. 10 years ago, and by complete coincidence, I found out that my husband has been cheating on me with men, and that from before we got married. We live in a smallish town in the south of the USA. Him coming out as gay will have consequences. I believe that is the only reason he has not come out to anyone. First, here's how I found out he was cheating on me. He got sloppy, left a credit card bill for a secret card in the pocket of a coat. While going through it, I found all the telltale signs of infidelity, payments to a hotel in a nearby county, restaurant bills, gifts, flowers, condoms, and lubricant, etc. Dum dum. I started camping outside the hotel on days he told me he would be late and I saw him bringing different men there. I am very good at car compartmentalization and have a great poker face, comes with growing up in an abusive household. So I was able to give myself the time to cool off and to come up with what I should do. Ma'am. First thing I did was getting an STD panel since I didn't know how safe he was with his partners. It came out negative. Then I convinced him that we should use condoms since I was having side effects from the pill. He was okay with it. Great way to protect yourself. Good idea. I had a long think and I came to the decision that I was not going to confront him, nor was I going to leave him. He was able to provide me a really good lifestyle, one that I never would be able to afford with my high school diploma. Diploma, diploma, a cleaning lady, a nanny to help with the kids, regular spa days and a country club, a new car every other year, luxury family vacations every year. I mean, sounds nice, y'all. He was a good dad, a good partner, the cheating aside, and really good in bed. I'm trying to put myself in this position and I'm trying to see the downsides. <laughs> I mean, I kind of get it, <laughs> but I was not going to let him have a single guilt-free week in his life. That would be my revenge. <laughs> Oh, I'm loving this. I am living for every word. I started small, planning great date nights for us, telling him that I felt our relationship has cooled, that I wanted the spark back. Then I would sometimes slip into conversation about tea, about a cheating husband, a uh, gasp, 
gay man that had been using his poor wife as a beard, complimenting the only gay couple we know for having the courage of being real men who were out and proud of themselves. On the other hand, I would praise him as the perfect husband to anyone and everyone, especially if he was in earshot. The amount of guilt gifts I got was astounding. The man was even sending me flowers weekly. <laughs> in addition to the spa days and the new car every other year. And <laughs> Man, this lady is smart. Are y'all taking notes? Cause I'm about to start taking some notes, damn. It continued the same way for years. I could literally see how much it was weighing on him, me. While my parents were part of a commune with the concept of free love, I was the same. I just considered myself in an open marriage. It seems that cheating is easier to ignore if you are not that big on monogamy in the first place. And my husband was keeping me satisfied, so I felt no need to find a partner of my own. Sounds like everyone's happy, but you're no good lying, cheating husband. <laughs> Then four years ago, I guess he met the love of his life. He started seeing just the one guy. I was seriously thinking of ending the whole thing, especially since I have started a business by then and was able to bring in enough money to support myself and my kids while maintaining my lifestyle. Good for you. But then he went and introduced his side piece to us. He fucking brought him into our house, introduced him to our kids, and that was enough for me to keep tormenting him. Apparently he was a new friend he made while golfing. Okay, too fucking far. You wanna keep it out of the house, you wanna keep it under wraps, you're gonna come and invite your fuck buddy into my house to introduce him to my children after years of infidelity? Now you're getting revenge. He started hinting at moving to another state, one where it would be easier for him to come out. I refused. I told him that my business was here and I was not going to start over in another state. Also, the kids have their friends and extended family here. It would be unfair to uproot them. Yeah, just for you, the, low, the no good cheating lying husband. Then he started trying to start arguments. I guess he wanted us to fight then for me to ask for a divorce. I just stopped all those arguments in their tracks. I would just agree with whatever he said. He was right, I was wrong. And to make it up to him, how about a nice dinner and some great sex? He hated that. I knew from spying on his phone that having sex with me felt like cheating on his boyfriend. The audacity of this man. I'm getting enraged. I might have to bring out the heart rate monitor. I also knew that his boyfriend was pressuring him to leave me almost every day. He was stuck between a rock and a hard place. He started drinking and when it got too heavy, that was when I decided that enough was enough. I wanted to ruin his life, not his health. I also grew up with an alcoholic father and did not want that for my kids. So I gathered all the evidence of his infidelity over the last nine years, photos with different men, conversations, his grinder profile. That's far, man. Even though he no longer had one, everything. Then I hired a divorce attor attor attorney, attorney and mailed the evidence to his employer. He has a morality clause in his contract and adultery breaks it. All of his relatives, including his parents, as well as our church. He actually was never big on religion. His actually, I was never big on religion like him. It be the most religious ones who go against their religion the most, don't it? It was like a bomb exploded. He was fired. The congregation turned on him for cheating, not for being gay. Let's keep that straight. I would never allow my kids to be a part of a church that discriminated against their father, even if he was not out. His parents wouldn't take him in after I kicked him out and he was shamed publicly. Gotta love that small town gossip mill. And the cherry on top, his boyfriend was, was run out of the town and, could, and he couldn't follow him because he wanted to fight for custody of our kids. You really fucked around and found out, friend. Now, almost a year later, I'm a free woman. I got to keep the house, my car, and my business. He got 75% of the retirement and investment cap accounts, but he won't be paying alimony. I got full custody. He got visitations. I also got child support. He had to move six hours away to find a new job. Couldn't put the last job he worked at his whole life as a reference. His relationship with his family is rocky. His reputation in town is ruined, so he can't move back anytime soon. And the love of his life left him for good. And my kids only tolerate him because I did my best to shield them. 
them and to tell them that he is still a good father to them. I also made sure to treat him politely, never talked bad about him, and had a lengthy talk about how their father being gay is okay, it's who he is, and that it was not his fault. The only thing he did wrong was hiding it from me. So I guess the result of his cheating was years of guilt followed by a ruined life. Yo, that's called the long game. So last week, which was just a couple days ago for me, we had a pro revenge, I believe. And uh, it was a boyfriend who like had a box of dead mice that he gave to his girlfriend as a joke gift, even though he knew she was terrified of mice. And then like 32 late years later, she hid a box of dead and live mice in his car while he was like, in a bar or something and he opened it and freaked out and she was like it's just a stupid joke stop being such a big baby that was a, re a revenge dish best served cold this woman did not ever let that dish get cold she kept it heated in the oven this entire 10 years kept feeding the fire kept oh my goodness she are y'all taking notes? Like this is how you do it. Holy crap. Whew, okay, there's an edit. Let's make something clear. I am not the good person in this story. We were both bad. I am not here trying to get pats on the back or to be told that I did well. I know that what I did was messed up. I am here because I wanted to tell someone and I can't do that in real life. Um, sure, do I think this was the moral high ground? Nah, but I'm a petty bitch too and uh, I think he got what he fucking deserved. You wanna fuck around with me? You wanna call it cheating on your boyfriend when you're with your wife? I think the hell not. Absolutely not. He got hit what he deserved. I uh, said it once and I'll say it again. He fucked around with the wrong lady and he found out. Sorry not sorry is right. <laughs> I would like to know what you all think about that nuclear revenge in the comments and let's get on to the next story. This says all army service records lost and it's labeled revenge-tastic. Yikes, my best friend and her husband who are the ones moving in soon, uh, he is in the Navy. He is about to finish his five-year contract. Um, very thankful for his service to this country. Very thankful that he's getting out because he was basically assigned to the most toxic naval base in this country. And he paid for it with his mental health, unfortunately. Um, but if all his service records were all of a sudden lost, that would be a big deal. <laughs> Let's see what this story has to say. This happened a few years back. My dad found out that he was a super allergic to some kind of shrub in central Texas, Fort Hood, after he was transferred there. As a result, he was restricted to work, office work, and prohibited by army doctors from outside duties. His West Point grad commanding officer was a hyper warrior kind of dude who detested soldiers who didn't want to train 24 seven. Unfortunately, he thought my dad was milking his allergies in order to avoid being a real soldier. My dad was also married and my mom was pregnant with my older sister, a situation that infuriated the captain because hashtag reasons. God forbid you try to live your life and have a family while you're in the military. God forbid your whole life isn't the military when you're in the military. Toxic y'all. <laughs> The CEO never ever passed an opportunity to humiliate my dad by questioning his manhood, doubting his commitment to the, protecting the constitution, disparaging his duties, etc. The CEO would call him out in front of the company or debase him in front of the higher HQ staff. He'd call the house at 6 a.m. on Sunday and order dad in for bullshit reasons, anything to piss him off. In short, he made his life a living hell. For what it's worth, the first sergeant loved my dad's work performance and said so privately. My, when my dad got over orders to leave active duty, which enraged the CEO, the CEO, I said CEO, he found out that the CEO received orders for an assignment that was a notch needed to guarantee promotions as well as other plum jobs. Jo dad decided to fuck with his official records before leaving. Oh, so it's not the OP who had his service records lost. It's the douchebag. Okay, I'm here for it then. 
As company clerk, he had full access to unit personnel files, orders, etc., which meant he also had keys to the building as well. This was during the pre-digital, pre-computer era. The night before my dad was to get out, he took all of the captain's personnel files and mailed them separately and anonymously to various posts around the globe, knowing full well it would take weeks to deliver them to geographically unrelated unit mailrooms around the world that may or may not open the packages in order to return them. It just so happened that the unit was in the field for a two week exercise on the day my dad left, which meant a skeleton crew would man the phones and mow lawns until they returned from the field. No one was the wiser for weeks. One of my dad's old poker playing sergeant buds wrote a few months later telling him that the captain went ballistic, that the missing files seriously damaged the fuck face of a captain's career prospects since some of the, some of the files were lost in the system. Therefore, the coveted assignment orders were canceled and the entire personnel record had to be reconstructed manually by the Department of the Army. My dad said it was a teaching moment for the cruel asshole that you should never fuck with the unit clerk because every chairborne ranger knows how to seriously wound enemies, foreign and domestic. I mean, you want to be a dick to the person who handles all the files. You want to be a dick, period? Like, why? Just because you're on your high fucking horse and you think that everyone in the military should be 100% dedicated to all aspects of the military? Nah, dude, some people are just here to, like, do what they can for their country while they're here and, like, further their lives and, like, put their put themselves and their family or their future family in a better position. Like, that's what y'all tote. Like, join the army and uh, turn your life around and have a career <laughs> infuriating glad you got revenge on that ass hat let's get into the next story i 15 male indirectly caused the demise of my abusive ex stepdad yikes y'all i believe this deals with unaliving oneself and if that is triggering for you feel free to skip to the next story um but in the meantime we are gonna get into it the post is labeled sorry, not sorry. So let's see what they have to say. Backstory. When I was nine, my mom met a man who for the sake of the story will call Jay. Jay was an unremarkable man. He was a chef and he was from New York living in South Philadelphia at the time. My mom being emotionally unstable decided to give him a try after lots of past relationships not working out. Seriously, she has a bad taste in men. And I feel it is a good time to mention my dad is unalive from a drug overdose. Philadelphia man, drugs are everywhere. So my mom was desperate for someone to be that guy who is good for her and me. She gives Jay a chance and out of the boom, out of, out of, the, out of nowhere, boom, Jay has cancer. Came out of the blue and my mom's heartstrings were pulled by him and she was attached to him for good. <sighs> Funny how those things work out, isn't it? I was nine at the time, so of course I was a stupid kid who never thought my mom could be wrong. Well, I didn't notice her getting black eyes, but my grandfather did. So one day at a corner store in my neighborhood, he decided to beat Jay black and blue. He was stuck on the couch for days and looking back, it brings a smile to my face, but he convinced my mom that my grandmother, who was manipulative, manipulated my grandfather to beat him up so we have to move. After an intervention was held, holy fucking shit, I was there, it was wild, my mom had I decided to move. We packed our things in our van and I held my 90 pound Rottweiler on my lap and we moved to fucking Florida. Chapter two, fucking Florida. No offense to y'all that live in Florida, but that's just like one place I would never want to live. I visited many times growing up. My dad lived down there. I just have no interest in it. I'm not one for heat. I'm not one for beaches. I'm not one for... It just doesn't appeal to me. <laughs> if I go to Florida, I go to Disney World or Universal Studios and then I'm leaving. That's just me. I'm gonna admit life kind of sucked here. For five years, I was stuck in such a dumpster fire of a state with no family support. My mom was abused daily and I was mostly mentally abused. I also lost my great grandmother at this time and I wanted to go back to Philly for the funeral, but Jay said no. Eventually in 2021, my mom left Jay and then the worst night of my life happened. Chapter three, Halloween 2021. I was still in Florida, shocker, and I went trick or treating with a younger friend. At this point in time, my mom was paying for Jay's new apartment because she felt because she just wanted him gone. 
Ladies, please don't be this fucking stupid. Well, he broke into our apartment, took my puppy for a walk. Weird time to care about a dog while committing a crime, but hey, my dog had fun and smashed everything. My mom decided instead of calling the police, she would confront him with me alone. Oh, you mean the one who's been beating your ass for years? Great idea. Sound decision. So we went and as a precaution, my mom had a knife on her. We went and when we got there, there was a girl with Jay. A fight ensued and I called 911. I also beat the everlasting shit out of Jay. Unfortunately, my mom couldn't see that and thought Jay was winning. So she stabbed him, non-lethal. His fat got it and he didn't go to the hospital. So when police show up, they gave a good look at my mom with choke marks from the fight and arrested her for assault, assault and breaking and entering. Great decision after great decision after great decision. Chapter four, leaving Florida and having a very Merry Christmas. Well, the trial came and went. My mother is off the hook, but she will be a felon until a completion of a program. So we left him in Florida and decided to move back north to New Jersey. I know my mom breaking up with Jay was, was a count to me because I pushed hard for it. Life continues, but November comes around and I received news that made me burst out in laughter. Jay's sister came forward and told us he shot himself in the head. I even read his unaliving note and everything. I ruined his relationship with my mom and karma came back. Life go on, goes on and he dies unloved and alone. Why did he unalive himself? Cause his life was ruined. Seems like he didn't have much of a life to begin with, but okay. Edit, thank you for all the supportive comments. I do want to clear up one thing. My mother has mental issues and she was diagnosed wrong. She was taking medicine that made her worse, not better. She's on track to get off her current medication and take new medication too soon. Edit two, I don't feel guilty about what happened. I actually feel angry that he's gone. I would rather have him live in a home as a homeless bum with nothing in his life. Unfortunately, he took the easy way out, which was the bullet, but he's still dead. So I get some comfort from that. I agree with the sorry, not sorry. Sounds like Jay is a f was a fucking loser who contributed nothing to society or his family or his loved ones. So can't say I'm sorry he's gone either. Sorry, not sorry. I'd like to know what you think about that one in the comments and let's get on to the next story. This said, dude pays me in counterfeit currency immediately gets arrested. I mean, that's what happens when you use counterfeit money, eh? Years ago, roughly 2010, when I was doing pizza delivery, I delivered on campus. Pretty standard procedure, call the customer and wait in the parking lot. Buddy comes down, hands me money, takes the pizza and walks away. Then he starts to run. I look in my hand and one of the $10 bills is ripped in half and the 20 is horribly counterfeit. Dude's already back in his dorm and it's pass activated so I can't even get in. Then I remembered I have his number in my phone from when I called him. So I call the store, tell them what happened and they mark his number as a prank caller so no more deliveries. Figured, eh, that's good enough, I guess. Then as I was leaving, I see campus security talking to a police member. There was a check stop just before the entrance to the grounds. I stop and walk up and give them the rundown of what happened. Give the counterfeit bill and the ripped bill to the officer while the campus security dude is looking up the phone number in the student directory. Campus security finds out who it is and off they go. 10 minutes later, Buddy is in the back of a police car with his dorm mate for theft under a thousand dollars because technically he didn't pay me for the pizza, possession of counterfeit currency, he had more in his dorm, possession of narcotics, possession of a controlled substance, Addies and Zannies, I believe, possession with intent to sell, possession of stolen property, and there was another charge, but I can't remember. Just an all around upstanding citizen. I guess he posted bail a couple days later and came down to the pizza shop to have some words with me, but I wasn't working that night. So Buddy started trashing the lobby and got arrested again for trespassing, criminal mischief, vandalism. And they found a knife on him as well when they searched him. So there was a weapons charge too, but I think that got dropped. I'm not sure what happened after the second arrest as I was never called to testify in court, but I'm going to assume he took a plea deal. He most definitely got expelled from the university though. Wow. Talk about shooting your dumb ass in the fucking foot over and over and over again. That was not a nuclear revenge, sir. That was just doing the legal thing. 
you cannot make fake money. You cannot use fake money. And if you do, you're probably gonna get arrested. Pretty simple math, sir, but apparently that's too advanced for you. And now that you're kicked out of college, I'm guessing it's a lesson you won't learn. I would like to know which nuclear revenge was your favorite in the comments. Don't forget, we have a playlist of other revenge stories up here that you can binge. Please don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.